Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review 784. Today I'm going to review Osworn Into the Deep Wood again. I reviewed it about a year ago. Uh, since then I've completed the campaign with uh, myself and my friends and some folks have been asking me to kind of take a look at it, kind of give it the full sort of review once we've kind of finished the game, you know, 100% complete, so to speak. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do today. It's going to be a little bit different. I will put a link to the original review where I go in more kind of the traditional review format with the mechanics and things. And there's no spoilers at all in that other review. There will be some at the end, but everything is going to be time stamped and I'm going to have everything spoiler wise at the very, 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 very end of this video. And it's going to be, you know, watermarked or whatever. And so, you know, you won't run into any, uh, but I have a lot of stuff to talk about that is non spoilery. And so we're just going to jump right into it. So if you're a little bit familiar with the game, this will work. If you've played the game, this will work. If you've not played the game or not familiar with it, definitely go check out the other uh, review that'll be linked below. Uh, one more little piece of introdu introduction or preamble. Uh, it took us about a year to get through it. Mostly we played it about every two weeks or so. Sometimes there were some gaps there. I, th I think if I pulled two months out of the year where we just couldn't sync up, whether I was out of town, other folks were out of town, you know, summer vacation type stuff and all that kind of thing, holidays, um, uh, you know, that we didn't get any plays during that. But usually it was about every couple of weeks we'd play a game of it. And it took about a year to get through. There's 21 scenarios. Um, so, so yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, so let me start off with a couple of cons and then I'll talk about some comparisons and then some of my pros and then at the end uh, kind of some spoilery pros. I don't have any spoiler filled cons. Um, but uh, so we'll jump into some of the couple of cons. Uh, to me the, the first con is the companion mode. So in this game you can play kind of the full-fledged characters with your own individualized decks. And then if you don't want to do that, then you can have, you know, maybe one character that is like kind of a full blown character. And then you have up to, you know, two, three other characters that are sort of like little, like reduced in scope and functionality characters, like little cards and you just do little dice things. And there's like little special abilities you can unlock, but it's, you don't have a deck of cards. You're not playing with the cool card cooldown stuff and you're, you're a lot less powerful. Now there has been an update to, I think, everything in that regard in, in terms of the second edition that had just come out and those have been updated across the board. So it might be a little bit better now. We've not really played because we got our stuff, you know, kind of like at the end of our campaign. We did upgrade some of our characters and things and some of the boss fights and stuff. So we did get to experience some of that. But as far as the companion stuff goes, we didn't really, uh, you know, play with the new stuff. My experience with that is I did try soloing the game as well, kind of on the on the side with like one character and three companions, and it just didn't really quite work. And I, so I think this is kind of like a con for playing solo personally for me. I'd want to play with all four full characters, and to me that would just be too much kind of going on. Now it might have improved a little bit with some of that, um, and it was okay. So we had some times where we had three of us. And you know, one guy couldn't make it and he was like, whatever, just keep playing. And so we tried it a couple of times with his companion as well. And it was all right. I mean, it just wasn't as good. So we ended up just playing, I ended up playing two characters on the, all those games. And that to me was much, much better. I just, you just, you miss out on so much. Um, and yeah, but now I do like, just, just to make sure we're clear. So when one of your guys gets knocked out, you pull in like one of your mercenary guys and you kind of, you know, uh, you're not removed from the game but you're still kind of hanging out in there trying to participating and that works pretty well. So, cause that's usually towards the end of the game. There's only probably a couple of rounds left at most. So that part works really well, but I just the whole campaign and stuff. I didn't really enjoy that. Now the second con there's only two cons uh, is the impact on story events and some encounters could feel a little bit more meaningful. So this is kind of a double edged thing because I will talk positively about the story mode and the narrative a bunch in a minute, but after a while, it's kind of like if I did this, I get this little bonus token going into the encounter. If I did this, I maybe would have got a different bonus token or I just wouldn't have gotten a bonus token. And it does start to kind of feel like you're just kind of playing through the motions a little bit in terms of the what the mechanical impact of it is. Now, narrative impact, let's, let's leave that for later because that's definitely a positive. But mechanically, how some of the story things, you know, interact with the future and um, you know, if you're in the story mode, in the future encounter mode, 
that just starts to feel a little bit sort of repetitive and phoned in. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to be mean with the words when I'm saying, but it does feel that way. It's like, ah, just this again, oh, I get an empower token, I get a reroll token or whatever. You know, it just, yeah, <laughs> you know, not all the time, you know, not a hundred percent of the time in the game. There are some cool things where you're like, oh, I did this and I, this happened mechanically. And it's pretty cool, but, um, and those are some of the more involved things I have to, you'd have to kind of spoil, but generally sort of like when it, the game isn't firing on all cylinders in the story mode, then that's what it kind of feels like. You're just like, eh, whatever, we chose this and we got a token, big deal. So that that's kind of a lighter con there. Uh, all right, so now let's just talk, I was asked to specifically compare this to other games of this style and stuff like that. And then I'll, I'll do that now and then I'll get into um, a bunch of the non-spoiler pros after having played the campaign. So comparisons to this. So this game is not a Shadows of Brimstone, Warhammer Quest, League of Dungeoneers, procedurally generated thing. It's a strict kind of almost on rails narrative that you play through once and you play that quest and you get through the campaign. And you could play it again, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it's gonna be the same exact story. So it's not like just auto-generated stuff. It's more like a Kingdom Death Monster, uh, Descent Legends of the Dark, which came out a couple of years ago, which is probably, this is probably most similar to that. And then um, a Gloomhaven, right? And so this is kind of like a mix of Descent Legends of the Dark and Kingdom Death Monster, because you have kind of a preamble and then a big boss fight, and a preamble and a boss fight. And Descent Legends of the Dark kind of has that where you have sort of a preamble and then a dungeon crawl type of thing. Now the preamble in this is the best. And I think this is the best out of all four of those games, including this one. So Kingdom Death, Descent, Legend of the Dark, Gloomhaven, and then Oathsworn. I think Oathsworn is the better out of all, all four of those games. And I think it's not close. Um, I think it takes probably the best parts of each of those. Cause I would say arguably Gloomhaven has the more in depth, crunchy, uh, strategic combat, but this is pretty, pretty close to that. I mean, all, all four of these games are very strong in terms of like the mechanics and the special abilities or the card play and that kind of thing. Even Kingdom Death, even Descent, uh, they're all really, really strong in that regard. Um, I think Gloomhaven, you, you probably would give the nod to that one mechanically. I, I think you could argue that a few different ways. Um, now, story-wise, I think this one or Kingdom Death would kind of compete for that just because of the kind of preciseness of it. The Descent one, the app kind of lingers a little bit too long. I really like the story in it though, but the presentation and the way that the just the information is given to you um, works really well here and in Kingdom Death especially. I think that's where this, so like, like I said, it's kind of a combo because you're kind of, you, you can live in the app in this, and I think you should live in the app, but you could just use the storybooks in the box. You don't have to use the app at all. But to me, it just takes the experience to that next level. And the way that it uses the app, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, is one of the best that I've seen. So um, yeah, so me, to me, this is just as strong. I mean, you can kind of take or leave some of these different things. Maybe the theme in Kingdom Death entices you, or the, king, the theme in Descent entices you more than this one in Oathsworn. And I think that's a really good sign when you can come down to something and be like, I don't know, pick the one that has your favorite theme. Uh, you always see that kind of argued with a, another sort of adjacent game system called the D&D um, adventure series games, you know, like uh, Castle Ravenloft, Legend of Drist, and Wrath of Ashardalon, and there's a few more. And those are all within their little confines. They're all pretty much the same game. And, you know, I've seen this question come up recently for some reason, and, and so we said, which one should I get? And everybody's like, well, just pick the one that you like the theme of. And that kind of feel like the same of this, with these four games. Um, so, but yeah, I would put these right up there. And frankly, if you pin me down and ask me which one do you like better, I would say this one for sure. And I've not finished, I finished Descent, I didn't finish Gloomhaven, and I never finished uh, Kingdom Death. Um, so, I mean, that is what it is. I didn't have a desire to finish the other two, and Descent I did. Um, so yeah, this is, that, that's the comparison there. And I don't think it's really fair to kind of compare it to Shadows of Brimstone, Warhammer Quest kind of thing. Um, to me, they're a different game. You know, it's just a different world over there. Okay, so that's kind of the comparisons. So now we're gonna go through a bunch of uh, uh, my pros. And again, I'll have all of these time stamped, um, not really trying to hide information. So if you wanna to jump to a specific pro, then go for it. Um, 
So the first pro, I could actually see some people having some cons too, and I'll mention that. So the first pro I kind of mentioned, just mentioned was the mechanics. Uh, a couple of mechanics I talk about. Um, I like in this how you can kind of change at will using dice or cards because instead of rolling dice for combat and encounters, there's decks of cards for kind of the evil people and then your group, who <laughs> sometimes is evil. But, um, you know, you can kind of pick and choose and kind of play the probabilities of the card decks. That was one thing that we had a lot of fun in was like, let's get that deck going and see how it going. Because each deck is, I think, three dice worth of faces in the deck. So you kind of prime that deck on something that maybe isn't sort of, you feel is important. And you get in and see how many misses, how many criticals are coming out. And then we'd make a balance of like, okay, two cards here, a couple dice here. And that added a kind of a fun sort of, you know, probability game with it. And it was very, very interesting that way. And trying to kind of bet on crits and sort of plan that. And you don't have to do it that way. You could just roll dice and I think you'd be perfectly happy. You could just use the card deck. But I liked that you could do both. Cause I think doing dice only, it could just be random as hell sometimes. And doing cards only, it would just be not random enough. It would just be too dry and like, oh, let's count all the misses and the crits. You know, you're, you just kind of know what's coming. But kind of playing between both and just the rules say this at will swap however you want as like that's cool now we didn't do that with the the monsters i believe in the rules it says for the monsters it's that they, they recommend you just use the cards because they don't crit or anything like that unless there's some special ability that interacts with the crit on there um and uh yeah so it says just use the so with the monsters we just did the cards and that's it but whenever we did an action and we would use a combo that and it was a lot a lot of fun there and i liked there wasn't a ton of tokens in the game there's just a nice little tray small tray of them and they're all you get to kind of uh you know get to kind of know when to use them and stuff so i like that it wasn't just like token overload uh, which a lot of these games can have and it was a fun way to kind of bounce around you know each character's sort of abilities and figure out when to kind of go after certain tokens and stuff like that you know because if you totally whiff on an attack you get a token any tokens you spent you get back and you get one new token um but that's if you completely just total eat it which was cool because you become, I think it's like determined, right? Uh, so that was cool. And then deciding which tokens to get and stuff like that and working out which one, which cards when you play, you know, you would want to put tokens into. Cause some of these are like, oh, I'll, I just, I want to get this one out and empower it. And this is my one big hit. It's going to be forever until this card comes back into my hand, that kind of thing. And so, you know, kind of just learning your characters and how they work with the tokens like that. The other stuff was swapping characters. Um, a couple of the players in our thing says i'm done playing this character i'm going to just play a different character and it gives the the rule book gives you rules to kind of level up that character and catch it up very quickly um i'll talk more about that in a minute and so that was cool because that kept the game fresh and fun i played the same character all the way through i played the priest uh warrior priest i think technically and i like that because you know <laughs> the healing didn't start off great with that character but after a while for a while there was more like a buffing warrior priest and i actually did a lot of damage that way and then i did a little bit of healing and that came into play and then the second edition edition stuff kind of nerfed me a little bit in that regard because after a while like i was gonna once we got to higher level like i was getting really good and i was like yeah i kind of see how a nerf would need now early on no <laughs> but maybe i just learned the character but after a while i was like yeah i'm getting pretty strong here and i was like i wouldn't say i was one shotting stuff but i was you know i was doing a lot of damage there um and so but yeah um, one friend of mine in the group i think he played four different characters over the course of the campaign and you know one of them well, maybe that's a spoiler, but that's cool because like conceptually you have a large party with you and there's other NPCs and stuff, but there's nothing saying thematically like, oh, this other character that's a hero character wasn't hanging out kind of in the shadows. And then now has, you know, you're kind of his story or her story has taken more of a forefront to, you know, the, the, the plot. So that's really cool that you can just do that. Just screw it, swap it out, whatever. Um, now the part that i say well some people would see might be a con is like the leveling up is very very simple it's like you just everybody kind of gets the same level up sort of unlock like you get extra 
starting tokens, you get new cards that you can put into your deck so they just become available, like new skills. And there's not a ton of those. There's a fair amount. And I felt there's not a lot of them, but the ones you do get are really cool. You're like, oh, sh you know, oh my God, I get this now. And it doesn't happen every level or even every other level, but when it does happen, you're super excited and they're really cool, but there's not a lot. And then when you get new items, you basically are just like, it's the same kind of thing every time. It's like, uh, I'm gonna get the numbers wrong here, but you like draw four, uh, you know, items from the current level or from the next level. And then you get unique items from the current level from beating the boss. And it's usually like pieces of the boss or something or something related to it. And that's it. So you always get like the same thing. And then your backpack, which you can kind of expand is kind of like your little treasure pack. And you always have to like get rid of items. And if you get knocked out, you have to get rid of like two items. So anything you take into battle, you have to be willing to lose right there. And so you want to keep a little backpack full of like alternatives. You know, like let's say you're um, the cur, right? And you're using daggers. Let's keep a couple extra daggers in there. And then that way, if I get knocked out and I have to get rid of like, you know, my little gear piece and then a dagger, I know I've got a decent dagger to replace it with. And so once you kind of get the hang of that, <clears throat> that's all there's really to it. And you can go into town and buy and shop and stuff, but you're just pulling from those decks. I could see people saying, well, I don't give I get enough to like kind of tweak my character and, you know, really kind of fine tune it very specifically. It's just kind of like, here's some new stuff, you know, choose from it and then keep going. So it's very elegant and very smooth and doesn't take very long at all. But I like that. And because they do that, it makes it easy again to like swap characters out, kind of get to know the characters in the decks so you're not playing completely asymmetric mechanics. The decks are eh, relatively asymmetrical. I mean, they do different stuff, but the flow of everything's the same. So I think that was a good idea that they did that. Now, if you take a game I compared it to not being earlier, League of Dungeoneers, that's the complete opposite type of thing. You can go specialize to the point of your character being terrible in that game, um, but you can do that. You can go customize and make it very, very discreet, like an RPG level type of thing. This is more like a descent or something where you just like, here's your character, here's their name, here's the backstory, you're playing this person, here's their kind of set path of, of growth and skill gain and all that stuff, you just have that in there. And so some people like that, some people don't. I think in this case for this game, I think it works perfectly um, and it's cool. And some of the characters like interact with each other. I think it's the warden and the witch work well together. Um, there's the one um, like tree person that has some interesting stuff. And there's some other things with some of the, all the different types of characters really, at some point kind of get a place to shine in the plot. Um, so that's pretty cool too. Um, and, uh, so I, I like that, that, so that to me kind of makes it make more sense that they were a little bit sort of on the same track, sort of confined in a little bit of a box, the different characters. So I think that's a plus. Anyway, so that's all the mechanic stuff. Next thing is I'm going to talk about the puzzles and like the mini games. So in the story mode of each of the adventures, you've got story mode and the encounter there, the mini games and stuff are going to vary in like depth and complexity. Some of the story modes are going to be pretty simple, especially the first couple of scenarios. And then as you get into it, um, I mean, it's like a full blown, like little mini game in some cases, especially towards the end or little puzzles and stuff like that. And so I won't talk about any spoilers right here. There will be some spoilers to some of my favorite ones at the end of the video, which I was just like, we were like, what the heck? This is awesome. And so that is really, really cool. And I think that is where this game really excels because the way I can kind of sum that up is it feels to me like with this game, and I think I mentioned this in the original review, was it is like a D&D &D session. M more than any of these other games that I mentioned. And even like a game like League of Dungeoneers, which I think is like the most RPG D&D &D style game, just in terms of like, the amount of detail and stuff in your character and all the different skill checks and stat lines and your inventory and like it works more like an RPG than anything. But this feels like an actual D&D session because you have your story mode and then your boss fight. And if you think of a typical, whatever that means, D&D &D session, you have some of those things where you're like, you know, whatever, in town doing this thing, you talk to this NPC, you roll a check to you know check for what a charisma, this thing you might, you're, 
your game master might have like a little puzzle for you to solve, you know, um, that they come up with or found, you know, on some online resource or something like that. So this feels like that kind of thing where there's some like source material that if this was a Dungeons and Dragons game that your DM would have pulled from and found some cool, like, you know, piece of lore about whatever town you're in and all that kinds of stuff. And so you do that, you know, for like an hour and then you have a fight and then that's the end of your session. So even though this isn't like as open-ended as an RPG, the process of playing it feels like an RPG. Um, and then those puzzles and mini games kind of come into that. So that, that's a really good part. Um, the next part is the characters and the world building. I've kind of mentioned that before, but, um, but this is not generic fantasy. If anything, it's like generic grim dark fantasy. So it feels very Warhammer-esque, um, you know, very, uh, at the times when we were playing this, I could have seen this been like a Warhammer Old Worlds type story or even a Warhammer Age of Sigmar story because, you know, it's into the deep wood and I forget the realm. I'm an Age of Sigmar idiot, but uh, there's, I can't remember the realm of Gyram or something. There's like a realm that's like very nature and the nature is like fighting at everything and Nurgle's coming in there and so it's like plagued it. And so in this game, nature or whatever is very much alive and an antagonist in a lot of ways. And there's a bunch of other antagonists too. It's not just like pure, like, you know, you versus the deep wood, but um, that feel of it and some of this kind of grim, dark decisions that come into play where it's not really a great solution either way is a type of thing. Um, so if you presented this to me and told me it was a Warhammer thing, I'd be like, yeah, hundred percent. So it's very Warhammer-esque in that regard. Um, and, but it's really cool. It's got its own sort of system and there are, and I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's got its own sort of system in terms of, um, like the politics or whatever, you know, like the different governments or different like guilds and, you know, different factions that are in play. It's got its own vibe there for sure. Very Warhammer-esque though. And I don't think it's a bad thing. It's not, the tone of it is, is of a serious Warhammer. You know, so Warhammer, it tends to be a little bit tongue in cheek off the cuff, kind of depending on, you know, I don't know, that, that can kind of, you can kind of slice and dice that world to meet your needs. I think you could make it very silly and sort of, or even very punk rock or ever very serious and very sort of like a morality play. I mean, there's a couple of ways you can slice that. So this is more of a serious tone for sure. Um, and you know, I think it works for me. I, I, cause I kind of feel like I'm saying, well, it's just ripping off Warhammer. Um, I don't think so. I mean, I think it's inspired by, um, there's some neat specific details that I want to give you that are like, oh, that's cool. Like it's not, Warhammer-esque, you know, but it's just, I'm like, Ooh, like that's, that's making you, know, it makes you think and stuff. So anyway, so, but it all works really well. It's very hard without spoilers to kind of tell you specific people and stuff like that and events that happen. So it's very grim, dark though. It's very like, not, you know, easy going, fluffy fantasy, you know, it's not kingdom death level grim, grim, dark, but it's, it's in that vein. But I, I loved all that. So the narrative impact, um, I talked about this as a con, the narrative impact, uh, the story impact on the gameplay, the mechanics, but the story impact on the narrative is really cool. There's a lot of, you know, speaking of Grimdark, there's a lot of sort of tough decisions about how you want your party to be and how you want it to kind of evolve over time. And so we, we kind of evolved as a group, the four of us, kind of what our party's attitude should be. And then there were certain points where we we're like, okay, well, if we were complete jerks, then we would do this, but we're not complete jerks. We're just have a very rigid code of this and that. And it's hard to explain without spoilers, but it, you're like, okay, so we're, we're like, um, you know, stubborn to a point. <laughs> and then it was like, well, now that crossed the line. So that was cool though. It made like a narrative kind of, you know, decision that we had sort of evolved for our, ourselves, And I think you could play the game that way. Um, you could play it like as the complete, you know, sh knight in shining armor type of personality or, you know, completely dark and borderline evil or completely evil maybe. And then that would have an impact on how you react to things there. I don't think it's going to drive the larger plot. That's going to stay the same. 
but some of the interaction stuff, like you get some keywords and stuff that you will write down and then reference later, either that day or a couple scenarios from now or even at the end. There's not a ton of that, which I like as well. I don't like a ton of like keyword stuff necessarily. I don't think, I mean, sometimes I do, but not in this case, I don't think I would have liked it. So there's a few, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it does, you do have a good sense of the impact of your choices and what that means to everything going on. And so that kind of ties into this next point, which I mentioned already, which is the app. But by the app, I mean also like the production of everything. You know, the packaging, you can see here, you've got the four boxes, terrain box, two model boxes, and then the game box. Or if you had, if you got the standee version, you don't even need any of these other boxes, you can just get the one box. And you have just as good of an experience. Um, the way that everything is organized is cool. Like this is just, some of these games, they get sprawling with their Kickstarters and just like crap everywhere. And you know, there's something to be said about the way you can organize this and then easily break the game out. I mean, one part where Gloomhaven has gotten better at, I think, with some of the recent you know releases is the organization of components. This, this takes care of you. Um, and you can tell by everything that they've done with this game. And, and there, are all, there are many, many times when I've, we've been sitting through this and playing it and I've been noticing how much care went into the game to sort of take you through the experience. And part of that is the organization bits that are in here and the components. Part of that is the app itself. Now they hired um, a voice actor who's amazing. I always forget his name. He was on Game of Thrones for like a season or two. And he did an amazing job. The script that they go through is really well. He presents it very well because he does allow for the emotion and the impact of the decisions and the story points and all that stuff to, to weigh in into you. And so that really, again, helps with the narrative. I don't know that if they didn't have the app, I could not be bothered. There's, cause there's, there's a lot of text in some of these storybooks. So for me, you have to have the app. And the app also helps substitute, there's another book in here called The Journal. And so there are certain uh, stories where it's not just text and decisions, where there's like, like I said, little mini games and, and things. So the app will also take care of some of that too. And also in the game, the story mode, there's like a, there's every story just about has this little track and you put tokens on it and you can see how far along you are, and there's sometimes there's bonuses and stuff depending on if you're able to do something quickly or other little events will happen and that kind of stuff. So you could almost get rid of that. Now we still track that to see if we draw events from the event deck and all that stuff. But you could almost, if they upgrade the app even a little bit, you can almost just get rid of all the things in the story mode and not have anything on the table and just be driving through the app. As it is, you can pretty much do that. Um, I'll talk more about that in a minute with some spoilers, but again, I can't, I would not play this without the app. If you took the app out, I don't know, there's a lot of text. I wouldn't, I could not be bothered to sit there and try to read it myself or listen to somebody. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, you, you're, you would need a giant glass of some drink <laughs> to keep your throat wet so you could read all that. Um, it's too much. So you gotta have the app, I think. But if you don't, know, you can still play it. And if you're playing solo, which again, I didn't, it would be one of my cons, I wouldn't want to play it solo. You can just kind of read it and not have to read it out loud. Um, but yeah, everything is great. The models and all that stuff's great. You know, the, the artwork and everything is really, really good. So, okay, so one more. And this is the ending. This is a pro. I'm not going to talk about the ending. But the ending to me was narratively um, really, really cool. Um, the only sort of con there, I think narrative all that stuff was great. Um, I don't want to spoil it because the ending can go a couple ways and either one is like, Ooh, you know, it's like, wow. So, and we talked about it for, I don't know, it was like almost an hour. Cause at first I was like, this is dumb. And then I was like, wait, well not really. And then it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I see. And it's like, I mean, this is where we've been headed. And then, you know, it was just like. Hmm. You know, it was like one of those endings you just, you yeah, know, I don't know. I could think of a TV show like Sopranos ending is always the one where they just go to black at the end. Spoilers. Um, or whatever. There's some other shows that have had like controversial endings. To me, it wasn't like obviously bad ending. And I mean, it all was really good. But like my initial reaction was, man, that bugs me. 
but it's also like really cool. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That just a game would have these kind of endings possible. Uh, because I went back, I was like, well, what was the other alternative? You know, just to see. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. I see what the thing. So that's fine. Now, my only gripe with this, and I don't know how much of a gripe it really is, because sometimes when you end these games, like a Pandemic Legacy or Nemo's War or uh, even Descent Legends of the Dark, the um, you kind of get scored at the end, you know? I did not like the scoring, how that worked here. It was very like, eh. I was like, what? <laughs> like, that's nothing. I mean... I was like, eh, this is, I didn't like the scoring at all, but it also like didn't care that much. I, I really didn't care. How, like how well did you do? I'm like, don't give, you know, I don't give a crap. <laughs> That's the one thing I realized. I was like, this is, I do not like how this is scored. I also do not care at all. I was more interested in the narrative part of the ending. So yeah, so I, that could be kind of a con and a pro, but mostly this is a pro because I really liked how the narrative summed itself up. I mean, we played the last three or four scenarios all like within the space of a week. And, uh, cause we really wanted to get it done and see, you know, see how it was going and everything. And, uh, and yeah, so that, that's another big pro for me is the ending. Okay. So now we're going to do some pros. These are all spoilers. So everything will be timestamped. So you don't have to worry. Um, the first one is, and this is the toughest one because it's probably my favorite part of the game i mean there's others that have like stick out more but let me just say the the encounters the bosses that you fight now there's a couple of really really cool things that this does and i just want to talk about each one of them so i'm just going to list a few now, for example this one that you fight twice actually it kind of comes back it's a different beast but it's this worm piece that like kind of like goes in and out of the ground and so you have three pieces of it. So like when it moves, you move the tail to the body, the body to the head, and then the head goes, you know, wherever based on the card and how it goes. So this thing is like jumping around. This thing can eat people. It keeps you inside of it. But once you're inside of it, you can get like, you can use an ability to like cut through its stomach and get out. And so you're fighting like all three parts of it. And you still have to kill all three parts of it. Like it's technically still there, um, but it just, its abilities or something get kind of shut off from what I recall. Um, that one is really cool. And you have fights like that. So there's a lot of fights where it's like a big boss, like you can see um, uh, on the cover of the main game is the big rat queen. And so everybody knows you fight that in the first encounter. And so there's a, there's a lot of those scenarios where you fight like a big thing and then maybe there's some minions like the rat queen, there's a bunch of little rats. Uh, or you just fight the one thing. And so there's a lot of that. But then you have where you fight like another warband, basically. And speaking of Warhammer, like we fought that, I'm like, that is a total corn <laughs> warband that we're fighting. Um, but that one is like, they were like way more deadly than a giant monster because they would do like, they were like way more skilled. I was like, oh, sh this guy is going to do this and the shaman's here and the shaman's going to heal this. And like, oh, this is like fighting like a real, like another player, you know, another person. And so they didn't have as many like hit points and all, you know, different armor levels. And like, you don't have to kill like eight dice on the thing, but he's like, they are more crafty and, you know, evil and diabolical and scary and more difficult. And then you'd have other ones where like things would disappear on the board and come off and on. And then you fight like this shadow monster and there's little tiles that like move around. Um, uh, yeah. And, um, you know, uh, They'll have like different um, ways to interact with like the bosses, like these little interactive pieces. They're almost like they're almost like a piece of terrain. Some of the bosses where you can like jump on them and all that kind of stuff, and you can interact with the terrain. So one of the players we had was the uh, the bear, the the Ursel, and so they could actually pick up and throw terrain pieces at people. And so depending on the way the scenario worked, like that could be good to just clear the terrain out. Or maybe you don't want to do that because you gotta you want to kind of hide because they have this very powerful like um, it's not a laser but like a projectile attack that you you want to be behind <laughs> terrain so don't pick up that house and throw it you know um, and stuff like that and some of the scenarios were like there'll be lots of villagers there and so you want to try to rescue certain bit of them and so that will increase your warband size overall for the next ones and other ones you know you'd be like sending them out like well let's let them screen off the thing and die and all this um there's just a lot of variety there and it was really cool 
to sit down and I would say we played all 21 scenarios and I'd say maybe three tops were like eh, that was okay you know but the vast vast majority of them were really cool really fun and all that kind of stuff really really neat and so I think part of this also is because it took us a year to play it I think if we would really grind through it and played it in like three months I mean there's a possible because I think a lot of these games like people they I've heard them say like ah, it gets repetitive and all well you played like 80 games in three months you know take don't do that you know take your time so having that kind of space to it was you know like because you do the encounter and like it and then come back like two weeks later and be like oh this one's different um, you know and you have to relearn what your tactics are so spacing it out I think is a good thing as well I just want to mention that like I think that works really well but that's probably my most favorite part of the game was just the variety of encounters and that to me is really where the replayability side comes in and this is why i wanted to mention the replayability i don't know this is why my favorite style of game is that league of dungeoneers warhammer quest stuff because it just it's just random stuff happens you know stories are different all that now this one gives you uh, a quick way to set up all the scenarios so it's it's like a little like half a page of story that you can kind of just do, 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 do. so it kind of that way it will sort of like pre-generate all the like extra combat tokens and stuff that you might have if you play through the full story mode so if i wanted to go play scenario 12 i could look and see okay so here's all the stuff my characters would have because you can easily auto level stuff up i could go through and then read that little half page of story thing and so okay well we'll do some checks here okay so we all have a couple extra empower tokens or whatever and then jump in and play it and then there you go and you could do that that's the amount of replayability i don't think i'd want to play through the whole story again um because i think when i was talking before about the the narrative impact stuff that's always in in the local right in the tactical moment of kind of the personal of your character right so those are the kind of things that it has impact on the larger plot the linear plot arc you're not going to have a lot of impact on how that shakes out at the end of the day you're going to fight the same boss you know what i mean so you're always going to end up fighting the same boss at the end of this the story mode and you know some people could say that as a con i'm like well, this is not a role-playing game <laughs> like this is this is a board game that you're supposed to you know set up and play and then you fight the boss you know so that's not a con but for replayability i don't think i would play through the story again i might set it up and play through a scenario but i don't know i mean it's a little fresh so i'm not sure that i would do it so the replayability i think some people could like it and play through some of the scenarios i think it's geared up to do that i think they give you the tools to do that um and there were some boss fights that would be very interesting so we did i think we lost like got knocked out twice i know we did at least once i think it was twice we got the whole team got knocked out now there was times where there was only one hero left that was a few more times too so we we're close to getting knocked out but complete wipe um twice i think it was twice <laughs> it, was, I know it was at least once i'm sure it was twice and um so you fail forward no big deal i mean that didn't bother me at all we could have replayed it um but i I, that was, I didn't mind that so if we wanted to go back and play some of the harder ones you know and try to do better i mean you could do that that gives you the tools to do that though i don't know that i would okay so that's that's the encounters probably the best part of the game um now th the next there's three more here so these are the specific like story mode puzzle uh, mini game types of things uh, and the first one I'll talk about there's this tile placement thing where you um, you play out these cards and you move through like the deep wood and there's probably four or five scenarios where you do that instead of the city map because most of them you're like bouncing around the city doing little story events and stuff like that that's the most of them um, but that goes away definitely after kind of in the midway point you don't do that quite as much uh, but the little tile thing I we really like that and there's a few kind of rifts on that where sometimes something's chasing you through there or you have kind of a timer or you're trying to find different locations and you're kind of using like your general sense of direction which is really immersive uh because it'll kind of it'll say well you can go this way through the mountains or you can go this way around the mountain or whatever and it's cool i like it was just nice it's just a nice sort of break from you know 
just you know having NPC encounters and then having a boss fight. Um, now it's not my favorite. But we did like it though. So after tile placement, my second favorite thing, and these two last two that I'm going to do, these are right up there with like all the cool encounters. So this one is towards the very very end of the game. There's a castle defense. <laughs> Like a tower defense mini game so you fold open this map and you have these like monsters kind of flowing in in these lanes like playing a game of strongholds you know from portal games uh came out like 10 15 years ago it's like playing a little mini game of stronghold in a way that was really cool that was a lot of fun to sit there and just break it out it was very simple um but there was enough kind of going on i mean there was a couple of pages of rules for it and that was we were like what we get to play this whole game now <laughs> and said so, and then you got to play that after you got to play the encounter after that that was just really 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 cool love that absolutely love that um lots of cool little strategy things you know simple but it's like kind of a light little co-op game so that was neat but the absolutely best uh, puzzle story mode thing was there's this point where you're trying to uh, free somebody from prison and you have to go through like a couple of rooms and there's these guards that kind of like walk back and forth and they have like a light so they're always shining their light so to speak and so you're trying to and each room will have like different corridors and stuff so you're, and there's a timer kind of thing with how they kind of move and so the way you move is like you will run and turn and run and run. So you have to like pick the path and then you like, I mean, you could use the journal, but you, you tell the app and then you're like, okay, we did this Northwest, this, 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 this. And so you're trying, it's like met playing Metal Gear Solid, like as a board game. And you're trying to, cause it, it's like, okay, if I did hit this, this will move and this will move. So you're trying to do this whole order of operations. And there's a lot of puzzles kind of like that. So there's like little, you ever play, um, Bard's Tale 4, it's a recent Bard's Tale. <laughs> it has like all these like little puzzles you can interact with um, in that game of like turning dials and stuff or like seeing weird words. There's a lot of stuff like that too in the journal part. Um, and this one is like the best of those. So it's like this weird logic puzzle kind of thing, but it basically feels like you're playing Metal Gear Solid where you're sneaking around guards. That was just the coolest damn thing <laughs> that I was like, this is the greatest shit ever. <laughs> well, this, we just loved it. And uh, so then you rescue the guy and then you like that guy, you have like this moral choice what to do with them later. You're like, okay, we rescued him. And it's like, these people that keep asking us to do stuff do not seem like very like on the up and up. And so that whole like period in the game where you're kind of like learning a little bit of the politics and the factioning and all that kind of stuff that's going on in the game is, is right around that same Metal Gear Solid puzzle piece. Kind of like, right, probably right in the dead middle of the campaign, I think. And just really kind of brought everything home in terms of the game. And then you kind of have the rest of the plot sort of, uh, you know, unravel from, from that point forward. But, uh, but yeah, so that's, I mean, you know, that's, uh, I'll, I'll mark this as a timestamp in the conclusion, not spoiler. I mean, absolutely love the game. You know, I don't know that I would play through it again. I know they're thinking about some kind of sequel. You know, I could see that happening based on how things go, whether it involves the same people or just brand new people or whatever. I, it could go either way with that, really. Um, kind of, I'm trying not to spoil anything of the ending here. Um, anyway, if you played through the game, you know why I'm struggling here. But um, yeah, so I could see I could see them doing something like this again. It'd be a lot too. I mean, this was this was a lot. I mean, like as I mentioned in some of the earlier points here, a lot of care and attention went into the complete production of this thing. And to me, that's that's. I mean, this really is something I think everybody should should try to play through if they could, if they you know if they're into something kind of in this setting. Uh, because I think it really should stand out against some of these other games that I compared it to, uh, Kingdom Death um, and uh, Gloomhaven and all those other things, even like a Pandemic Legacy. I think that there's some good sort of, I don't know, I mean, I don't wanna sound all, I don't know, snooty or whatever, but like there's some really, really good kind of lessons to be learned here or whatever, you know what I mean? Just in terms of like what's, cap what's possible in the game and, you know, how to do things in the right way, that kind of stuff. I think from that perspective, um, 
and it's really enjoyable and fun and you know what I mean and all that stuff too there's some really good gripping uh, moral moments and all that kind of stuff you know it's just full of all that it's just really really good um, and it's, it, like I said it's at the beginning it's, it took us a year to play through it I'm more than happy that we did it it's been one of the best gaming experiences you know of my life and, and one thing people will pin me down is on the replayability and I'm like yeah I don't know I don't know that much that I'll replay it because we played it 21 times you know over a year I'm like do you have to keep playing it <laughs> like do I have to keep playing this like is that if I don't does that make my just opinion on it too bad like I, I don't know it seems like a strange strange thing and then the other thing is it's difficult here so that's a strange attitude and I have the same attitude I'm like well we're not going to keep playing the game for the rest of your life <laughs> it can't be that good <laughs> okay um and uh the other thing is um I know people don't really think that but sometimes it sound, it feels like that um the other thing is uh what was I gonna say oh and how we talk about spoilers is very painful and uh, this is probably not a good word but problematic in the board game space probably um because I like like I did not mention when I talked about the ending the specifics of how your ending is scored and if I did that would be kind of a spoiler but it's it's real. I'm not going to because I don't want to piss anybody off. I don't want to upset anybody. That's not really. Isn't that a spoiler? Because <laughs> uh, I, I mentioned I didn't like it. That was the one. The ending I liked. Narrative, everything. But the scoring was like I'm like that's dumb. <laughs> you know. And I also didn't care. I said that. But there are certain things I think, in general, and I probably even with TV and movies and stuff. It's it's so hard because. I get people don't want it spoiled. Um, like if you really don't want something spoiled, then you probably shouldn't be watching a review of it, I guess. I don't know, it's just tricky. It's really tricky. Because there's certain things that, you know, like think of it as a movie. It's like, okay, well in the movie, they went here and they did this and then at the end there was a big fight and the bad guy died. And it's like, oh, you spoiled it. I was like, well, what, what are we doing here? You know? Um, Unless it turns something on its head dramatically, it should be more about the journey, right? And the characters and that kind of stuff. Like that should be the important part. Not this, I think I've said this before, not like the science of the magic and the theology of the fictional world. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I think people get so stuck on that sometimes. I'm using this as an analogy to talk about spoilers in board games, but it's like, well, you know, that, that sword wouldn't go through that type of metal armor because the laser gun was made from this specific crystal. And it's like, are we watching the same stuff? <laughs> what am I watching here? I'm not watching it for that. I'm watching it for this character to get through a terrible event and come out on the other side of it intact or whatever you know what i'm saying so the analogy for this is the same kind of thing like how did we get there so if i talk about something like if i were to give you a specific boss fight or something or whatever does that really ruin it for you i don't know it's just difficult because i still am on the other side of it too where it's like oh i like the christmas morning reveal of opening these boxes as well it's so very difficult to talk about um and i think the thing is is because i've seen when i do a review that says no spoilers those get a lot more views than if i have it's like well there's spoilers in here and it's like nah <laughs> ain't nobody watching that I'm like oh really i mean i mean i get it I don't know. It's just tricky. Like, I think there's a larger conversation to have. I'm not trying to solve it right this second, but um, there's a lot of stuff in here that I could, you could have told me, and I'd be like, oh, cool. I can't wait to play that part. You know what I mean? Especially those last couple I talk about in the spoiler. I'm not trying to trick anybody to watch my spoiler part, but, you know, go watch it. <laughs> those last few in the spoiler part, I'm like, if you'd have told me this, just kind of generally, not solved it for me, you know, obviously don't do that. But like, just tell me, hey, this kind of thing is in here and this kind of thing is in here. I would've been like, oh, sweet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> cool, I can't wait to get to that part. You know, I don't know. It's tricky. Okay, thanks everybody.